All right, welcome back. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, some examples with these primary CSS select. Uh, so go ahead and click on this link uh, and go uh, visit the examples page. So our goal here is to uh, get you familiar with some of the primary selectors, so tag, ID, class, um, and then a couple different combinators. We've got the same structure that we used before, and I, I can certainly just, just turn you loose and let you go do this, but I'll do a couple of the things with you. Uh, and that's we've got a GitHub repository. Uh, so you should go to the GitHub repository. It should be a page that looks kind of like this. Uh, you should be able to just go ahead and download the zip. The zip file you can put anywhere on your computer you want. I think I'll just throw it in my downloads folder. That seems like a fine place to put it. Uh, however, once you extract it, uh, what I want you to do is, assuming you're taking this class for, for credit, um, I want you to extract it to a very specific location. And that's into that static file of the App Engine project you made last time, um, which is how you're going to turn in all of your static file work. So the place that you want to extract that to, uh, you'll have to find your App Engine project, uh, which I called Web Dev Links. You might have called it your static file server. And then inside that, there's a static folder. Uh, that's where this thing needs to go. And the only thing in there right now is the HTML basics. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to add also into that static folder um, the extracted contents of CSS selectors. Now, whenever you do it in this way, it's probably going to add a, at least if you're on Windows, a hyphen master on there. Uh, just go ahead and get rid of it. So you can see that inside of this, there's going to be two folders for exercises. The one we're doing now, which is the primary uh, CSS selector exercises. And then there's also the advanced uh, selector exercises. Uh, so those things are all well and good. The next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to fire up Eclipse. It looks like I've already got mine, uh, mine up and going here. And what you're going to have to do is you're just going to have to right click uh, on this project and say refresh. Uh, and then when you do your static folder, we'll now have that CSS selectors in it. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working uh, inside the primary uh, CSS selectors, uh, exercises 0, 1, and 2. Uh, there's also solutions if you get stuck, but again, try not to look at the solutions. Try hard to solve these things. Um, so we're going to be opening that file and looking at it. But just so that I don't forget, I'm going to go ahead and add the uh, the link to the home page. Uh, so if you start your server running uh, and then uh, take a Chrome browser to uh, 8080, I've got mine up. You can see that right now you've got just HTML basics and the exercises there. I want to go ahead and add links for the things we're about to do. I'm going to go ahead and add both of them um, and what I've done is I've just gone ahead and put them on my clipboard so that you didn't have to watch me type. Um, and so what I want the uh, the thing to say is I want to say CSS selectors, primary CSS selectors, and then advanced selectors. And with the uh, folder names that are on here, I've gone ahead and just typed them already. So yes, it's a static folder. Uh, the first one is at CSS selectors, um, primary CSS selector exercises. Uh, and there are three of those. And then the next one, which I'm just preparing for next time, is called Advanced Selector Exercises. Just make sure you type all those words right. And if you go open it, you can see that it also is going to have three. So with those changes, I save it up. I can go back to uh, my local host. Uh, and so now if I hit refresh, uh, what it should do is it should serve up uh, those two things. And so now inside here, I've got three exercises. And inside there, I've got three exercises. So I'm going to go ahead and go to exercise zero. Last time when you first went to an exercise, it was usually blank, but in this one, you're going to start with all the HTML, right? So all the HTML is here, uh, but you'll notice that it's a pretty standard uh, vanilla looking HTML, right? So if we go open up this example zero for exercise zero, uh, we can see that what it's doing in here is it's got a bunch of rules, actually. It's just only missing the selector, like everything else is present, but it's missing the selectors. And you've got all the HTML in here uh, already set. The way this game works is you may not modify the HTML at all. So you can't just go add a class to make it easier to find something you can't. That's cheating, right? Um, you can't modify the properties or values at all. The only thing you're allowed to do is modify these selectors. That's kind of how the game works in this, in this regard. And then as far as the instructions for what you're trying to do, uh, that's going to be over in this doc file. So, you know, you should read through this doc file. It's got all the information you want, like where that, that link was. Uh, and you can see that we're trying to start with this, which is what we had on our screen, and we're trying to turn it into this. I'm going to do just like one of the pieces with you. So, like one of the pieces would be that this top uh, row looks like it's gray, right? So, I've got to try to find, um, you know, a rule that makes it gray. So, it looks like it's right there. So, there's a lot of ways to try to find that row. Um, 
personally, the way I look at it is I see that there's a T head uh, and then there's a TR, which is directly under it. So the rule that I would add uh, is probably I would look for T head and then I'd look for um, a T head that has a direct descendant of a TR. So I'd save that uh, and then I'd refresh my page. And so that looks great. You can actually kind of work these things out to where you can see them both at the same time if you really want to. And in fact, that's not the only way to do it. Um, so here we actually said uh, we're looking for a TR because that's the way I think of it. I think of that row as being gray. Uh, but it actually turns out that the TR is just a layer that's printed on top of the T head. So actually we could have just said T head. So I'll save it uh, and refresh it with that. And you can see that that looks just the same, right? So there's a lot of different ways to do things. I do think tables are interesting because there's kind of like, there's the whole table and then painted on top of that is like the T head, the T body. And then one layer up from that are the rows that are in the T head, the T body. And then on top of those are the cells that are in the rows that are in T head and T body that are in the table, right? It's like a children's book. Um, and so the neat thing is, is one of the higher layers is transparent. Uh, you can just see through to see the, the color in the lower layer. Uh, that will sometimes get you in trouble um, if you paint on a higher layer and paint on a lower layer. You're going to only see the higher layer. All right, so uh, your goal is to uh, go nuts, uh, knocking these things out. There's one with a table. Uh, there's one with some unordered and ordered list uh, that do some interesting things. I think this one's my favorite example. Uh, and then there's also just kind of a real world example. I went and uh, I found uh, uh, some things that Google had done, and I just kind of showed you how these things actually get used. All right. Work these exercises, uh, knock out all three, then move on to the next video. See you next time.